What's up guys, Jake Burns checking back in here with the OBR Film Breakdown Quick Hits. We are going to take a look at Harrison Bryant, the Browns' recent selection, 115, to kind of continue moving on. We will continue to update these players as we have them. Jacob Phillips will come soon, but we're going to look at Bryant and his versatility and uh, ultimately what makes him a really good pick for the Kevin Stefanski offense. See him as an inline tight end here. Uh, I think what he does well is he gets up the seam and runs well. Um, whether it's in the slot, the H alignment, or the inline Y alignment that we see here, he's an effective route runner up the middle of the field. And, and, and Florida Atlantic did use some scheming for him to get open occasionally, but very soft hands and the ability, like I said, to get out in play action sort of undetected while, you know, sort of mirroring a look of, of you know, running down the field and in, in maybe climbing to the second level that defenders miss him, right? And he's got enough speed. He's a 4 7 3, 40 guy. He's got enough speed to get out in the open field and run a little bit. Not top-end, big-time speed, but enough speed to be effective as an inline tight end. And, uh, you know, over right about 200 snaps as an inline tight end. We'll talk about his blocking, but an effective route runner from that inline position in Florida Atlantic used him in um, some really good variations from that position. You get a feel here for his wide zone look, right? Um, you get a feel for his ability to to drag, deep drag, over route um, that the Browns will use often in the Stefanski offense. Very fluid, nice footwork toward the sideline, never really struggled with that. Um, they also would use him in the, in the immediate flat two occasionally, but a good example here of his ability to get out and run, bend that route perfectly, and catch it along the sideline. So Brian also worked a ton from the H alignment or slot. You know, still an effective player from those positions, pushing the football up the seam, run a lot of dig routes, ran a lot of out routes, uh, expanded his route tree in 2019 to be a more effective overall player. Um, will pluck the ball with his hands, but will sometimes let it get into his body as well. You see him aligned here in the uh, sort of tight wing. The Browns will probably use him in often. Is, is pretty effective at getting out of the backfield, sliding past, opposing in, selling that split zone look, getting into the flat and making plays. Um, from there, you know, run after catches is, is a positive for him. Again, not a burner as you'll see him get caught on an angle here, but good enough after the catch to uh, to make plays. Another example coming off of a, a wide zone play action look. He's dragging, you know, over the top here, right? You can see, again, from his tight alignment, just something that he's very comfortable doing, will never have an issue sneaking out from his wing position, Um you know, or inline tight end position and making an impact in the passing game, especially on wide zone boot stuff, things that he's comfortable with. The versatility the Browns will love and continue to love. Again, another example here, sort of selling that real quick stutter step, selling the block from his wing position. He will sometimes in Florida Atlantic, he would line up in the backfield and run this to an effective player from that position too. Sell, sell, get out. Right, make a nice catch and then, and then you know, sort of lay your body out and make the play in the end zone. So, uh, you know, the versatility is a big part of Bryant's game and a big part of the reason the Browns were drawn to him at this pick. And, um, you know, he can run, like I said, a variation of flat, drag, out routes, seam routes. He can do it all from that position. And I think it'll be a nice piece of the puzzle for him in Cleveland. And, you know, sort of selling here, right? Quick little stock and sell. Coming off wide zone again, selling that he's cutting off the backside before climbing. Sell, boom, out to the flat. Present your body, your shoulders, make a play in space, gain extra yards. Something he did better was gaining extra yards after the catch in 2019 is what helped him ultimately get to that Mackey Award and uh, push over 1,000 yards. What really helped Bryant is his ability as a pass blocker, right? Uh, his his experience as a an offensive tackle in high school. He didn't play tight end until his senior year in high school, and ultimately it, you can see it in his game and his ability to pass it and block. He's here blocking against Ohio State. This is young Zach Harrison, the freshman who everybody holds in high regard. Think he'll be the next Chase Young type player. You just notice the ability of of Bryant to lock in right, use those arms, use his base, use his chest to sort of keep parallel, drop the butt down, play from a low position, and a really good pass blocking rep. You'll get it again here, this time from the H alignment in the wing, one-on-one um, -on -one with the defensive end, which I don't expect the Browns to do very much, but he has the ability to sit in and block with consistent fundamentals and um, ultimately a pretty feisty run blocker. Not going to be able to, due to his size, handle many edges at the NFL level consistently, but you can see the footwork, his ability to work angles will be good enough in the pass game to help out, right? He's got that ability to sit in, understand what defensive ends or edges edge players are trying to do, and just you know, you want him to just give the quarterback enough time. 
And I think his ability in terms of base, footwork, feel for pass blocking due to his experience in his young football career will be something he can do at that position. You're going to see him here sort of seeking out somebody to take care of. This is where, again, that tackle uh, you know, background is, is, is seen for him from you know, the ability to have that awareness. you got a looping stun here that goes unblocked. Ford Atlantic line does not pick up the long stem. Um, looks like he's a, he's a three technique that is going to jab, loop around. Bryant sees it, picks it up, gives his quarterback the ample amount of time. As a blocker in running situation, Bryant's okay. He's, he's, he understands angles, again, which is very important, especially when things are pushing laterally. They would use him from the slot a lot as a key blocker on bubble screen, slip screen things. He always had a nice base, a nice ability to time up where the defender's angles were going to end up you know, running them in pursuit. He did a great job. He's always feisty in those situations. Did some wide zone work where he's double teaming initially, helping seal that edge, and then climbing to the second level. All things that he has experience in. Again, not an overwhelming guy, not a finisher like George Kittle, who some people try to compare him to, but he's feisty. He tries hard. He's not afraid to block. You can tell it is in his background, something that he's comfortable doing uh, when he's needed to. Another look at a bubble screen here. Look at him fight and work his way around, ultimately sealing that alley. Another example, right? Fight, get the body around, wall off the defender. Something he is very, very comfortable doing. A wide uh, angle here against Charlotte. Again, shuffle the feet, get out, know the angle that the defender's going to take, be there to help set up and, and, and provide that wall. But, but a guy who is, is just, he's just good enough. Mid zone here, he's going to really take a nice, good quality first and second step to wall off the backside, which is what you want to see. Um, again, he's going he's gonna to struggle against bigger, more physical, strong edge players, whether 3-4 or 4-3 guys, but they won't ask him to do that a ton early in his career. But I do have faith that he'll be feisty enough to get it done ultimately at that position early in his career. Another look at a wide zone scheme here. This is Jet, but it's pretty similar in terms of what you're expecting from your tight end here to get out and fight the head around. Looks like he's picking up a Ball State blitz here. Again, you, you really like his ability to understand angles, where he needs to be with his body positioning to sort of give his player a chance to get past his man that he's blocking. You like an inline look here down in the goal line, get the head in the right position, right? Get the head in the right position as best you can, fight, push him inside, use his leverage against him, wall off this hole right here, allow your running back to push his way into the end zone. So he can do all of those things. I think he can handle it. I don't think, again, I don't think he's going to have teaching tape that – you know, tight ends across the league are looking at, but he just needs, with his ability in the passing game, he just needs to be adequate on the run blocking side of things, and he has certainly has that ability to do so. A couple things we want to see improve from Bryant. First is the drops, too many of them. Um, you know, things against Ohio State early on in this game got ugly. Got a couple of these throws that got away from him using the hands. I think when he added nuance to his route tree, some things trickled away for him. In terms of the consistency at the catch point, he's just got to keep getting better. Only three drops over his previous three years, so it will not be a continual issue for him. I doubt it if they will. But again, he's got to just make sure he's consistently catching the football in the various alignments. You know, it just comes with repetition, muscle memory, getting where you need to be. I think it was just a one-off thing as the targets increased from a different number of locations and ultimately a different level of the field that maybe he wasn't accustomed to always catching the football at. Just some focus drops week one that popped up, um, you know, in a big game, in a big stage. And uh, it wasn't a continual thing throughout the year. A little bit here on the back shoulder fade, which he did all year, just letting the ball kind of get through his catch point. You would like to see him extend at the catch point here, lets this get into his body, ends up dropping it. Um, again, another little play action slip and slip route out of the backfield, just turning his head too quick, not focusing at the catch point, ends up dropping it. It's just little things, things that he's just got to keep getting better at. Could have been, you know, in a lot of targets in his senior year, it happens. You know, occasionally you're going to drop some of these. The, the, the eight number that he had was too high. I don't think it'll be a consistent thing for the young man. And uh, as he, you know, gets his route tree down at the NFL level and what this offense is expecting from him, I would be pretty surprised if drops are a big part of what happens to him in his NFL career. He's too fluid an athlete and uh, too good at different levels of the field to let this continue to hamper him. But he's got to improve. He's got to focus. He's got to get those numbers right. Last thing for Bryant, we'll be adding some nuance to his route tree. Here is he's just running a simple dig over the middle. You know, this dig route that he's running, you would like to see him use the left foot here to sell a hard fake in to make the defender think he's cutting out. Maybe a 1-2 that sells the defender on an out route and then get into your dig route, right? 
This might open up the passing window necessary. I think as you start playing better defensive backs at the NFL level who will jump routes, you need to be able to sell inside out and then back in here. That would open up a window that would give his quarterback a chance to deliver this football. So you want to see him as he gets more comfortable running routes in his career adding a little bit of route nuance, those little wrinkles that he can learn from guys who have done it before him. Austin Hooper will be an exceptional aid in this process. Even David Njoku, to an extent, who's been in the NFL for a while now. But even his wide receivers who know these sorts of little things that can help a guy excel at the next level. So for Brian, it's just going to be adding little subtle jabs, little weight leans, things like that that can help him take his game to the next level. And uh, we, we have big things in store for, for Harrison Bryan in Cleveland. I think he's going to be a nice player ultimately, has to improve a couple different things. But this is a, a picture of a tight end at 115 that you feel really good about as a bargain. And, um, you know, I hope you can get over to the OBR and read some of the content we have on him, 2,500 words about who he is as a player, tons of film breakdown in there too. And, uh, you know, I hope you guys enjoyed this little short video on his game. Have any questions, leave them in the comments. Make sure you're subscribing if you can. We appreciate the love. Check us out at the OBR. We'll catch you guys next time. Go Browns.